Hi, and welcome to this PowerShell tutorial video. In this video, we're going to be looking at how to automate the event viewer in Windows. So this can be done on Windows Server or your own Windows 10 or Windows 11 machine um, because they all have an event viewer, uh, which is basically just to see um, different events, whether it links to applications. If you have an application that's crashing, it'll leave events in the event viewer. Um, or also uh, security events. So failed logins is often something that I would look at um, through Event Viewer uh, to see if someone is trying to get into an account that they shouldn't be getting into and then putting in place in the firewall rules to block it. Or uh, maybe it's just someone that doesn't know their username so you could proactively um, go help them out. So Something uh, that I would be looking for um, would be something like this. So we have a bunch of failed logins here. Uh, so we have a failed login, we have another one, we have another one, and we have a few more here. Now, all of these logins are actually happening on an account of, they're trying the account admin. So I did a whole bunch of attempts um, on a username that does not exist, uh, which is admin on my domain. Um, and I just put in like random passwords, which I knew would, wouldn't work, but just to give us like a good base of what we're going to be working with. So in this video, we're going to be using the get event log commandlet. I'll be covering the get win event in a different video, uh, just cause they are two different commandlets. Uh, the get event log is definitely a more basic, easier to use. Uh, it takes a little bit longer to query. I find, uh, especially depending on how you structure your query for get win event you could make the get win event commandlet go very, very fast. Uh, so we'll be seeing both of those uh, throughout the next couple videos. So let's go ahead and let's get started with the get event log. So firstly, the commandlet is just get event log. And we have a bunch of options, uh, which is log name, computer name, newest, after, before, username, instance ID, index, entry type, source, message. Uh, so we definitely have a whole bunch here. So what I like to do is we're going to be getting the failed logins. So the log name that we're going to be looking for is going to be the security log. So if I just do security here and we just run this first command. Uh, so here we are, we're just getting all the events related to security. But as you can see, this is getting everything, including the successful logins. Uh, so we want to filter that a little bit more. Uh, so if I come back to the event viewer, I can see that the source is coming from, uh, you can't see the whole word here. This, this window is not quite big enough. Uh, but if we go into details here and we open up system, we can actually see that the source is Microsoft Windows Security Auditing. So what I would do is I would copy this. And then for the source, you could just paste that in here. So that will add that it only gets the security auditing, which pretty much is only going to be the type of event that you're getting in security, unless you have different roles installed on your server, in which case uh, you definitely might have some different sources, uh, especially if you have like a network policy server. Um, or anything like that. But let's do the source for now. Uh, and then what we want to do is uh, we simply want to get um, the errors. Um, so we know that the all the audit failures are actually uh, 4625 for the event IDs uh, or their audit failures. So there's two ways to do this. Uh, the first way is by using one of the um, properties here, which is actually entry type. Now entry type, we actually have failure audit right here. So if we actually run this, we're going to get all of our failed logins. Now, I can actually do a different way, which is going to be, I just have to wait till this finishes. So this is kind of what I mean, like the event log definitely works, it gets your events pretty quickly. Uh, but there is definitely a slight uh, timing uh, it does take quite a bit of time. So another way that we could do is we can look by instance ID. Now the instance ID 
is going to be your event ID. So in our case, it's going to be 4625 is what we're looking for. So if we do that, we're going to again get all of our failures. So there's two ways. Um, with the get event log, uh, depending on what you're looking for, I would probably just use the uh, entry type. It's a lot easier, your preloaded uh, data there. Now, what I would like to do typically is I would really only like to see the event in the last hour. So as we can see here, we have a bunch that happened at 10 o'clock, and then we have one that happened at 8.58, which was another one of my tests there. So let's just do after. And then what I like to do here is I like to do a, uh, just like a variable wrapper. So a dollar sign, open parentheses, close parentheses, and do a get date. And then what I like to do is do a dot notation afterwards and do add hours, and then we add negative one hours. So in fact, it, subscript, it subtracts an hour. So if we do this, we only get the events that happened in the last hour. We don't get that one from 8.58. We only get the ones from 10, because it is currently 10.06, uh, where I am right now filming this video. So this is definitely how you would filter that. Now we have all of our events. Now what we could do is we could store this in a variable. So let's store it in a variable called events. Let's store that in here. So this is something that I would probably run like every hour and just kind of see what type of data you're getting, uh, especially if it's something that you're wanting to investigate because uh, you're finding an account locks out every so often. You want to figure out where is this coming from? Can I potentially fix this? Uh, by blocking an IP that is constantly act, trying to access that account and causing event uh, account lockouts. So we can do a for each event in events here. And then what I like to do is I like to just run this um, blank just so I could preload the dot notations and make my life a little bit easier. So now if we do event, we can see everything that it gets. But what I like to do is I like to do a select star here. So just pipe it to select star. Or if you want to use the long version, select dash object star. So if we run this here, we get the full um, event here. So we can see that we get an event ID. We get a machine name, uh, which is your server, like the server that I'm getting the event viewer from. And then we can see like the index number, we can see the category, category number, event, uh, the entry type, and the message. We can see that the message is for the account name admin. Um, but we see that the message is just like a text field, like not very easy to work with. Uh, we can see the source, uh, we get replacement strings, which we'll be looking at in just a moment. Then the instance ID, and then the time generated, and then the time written the username, site, and container. So what I like to look at is the replacement strings. So let's go ahead and let's do event.replacement strings and let's just look at that. So this is what we get back. So this is all the data that's actually inside the message for each of the fields. So what I like to do is I actually like to grab these and store them into variables themselves. So an easier way to actually see what variable, what values you need to take in. So let's just look at event.message. So here we have the message. Let me just make this bigger for you guys. So here we have the message. Um, we can see that the security ID is just a, a SID that does not exist. Um, and then we have a security ID again doesn't exist. The account name is admin. The account domain was on the jacked domain. We can see that the workstation name that made the attempt uh, was laptop 425UEEAC. And then the source network address was 172.30.123.10. And it was attempted over NTLM. So we have quite a bit of data from this message, but none of it's really useful for us because it's just in a text field. But if we look at the replacement strings, we can actually see all those values. So I know that this is the username. 
this is the domain. This is the call, um, the workstation name that called it. And this is the IP from that workstation. So these are going to be the values that I want to grab from that type of event. So what I would do in order to find this easier, because otherwise you're going to have to guess which value in the array that it is. And five is the username. I know that from previous experience, um, but this is not something that would be very easily guessed just by looking at this. You'd have to count and sometimes you just lose track of that count uh, in your head. So what I like to do is I like to do a for each, and then we're going to open up um, a parentheses, and then we're going to do a dollar sign x in zero dot dot dollar sign event dot replacement strings dot count. And then we're going to close the parentheses, open and close curly brackets, and then in here we're going to do a write output and then open and close quotations. And we're gonna do a dollar sign X. Then all I, I like to do is a dash. And then we're gonna do a dollar sign open and close parentheses to hold a variable because we're gonna be doing a dot notation inside of a string. Then we're gonna do event dot replacement strings and then open and close square bracket. And we are gonna reference our X number here. So let me just bring this down so you guys can actually see the whole thing. So let's just see what this gives us. Now, as we can see, we get an index number or the array index number for each value here. So this makes it very, very easy. So then all I can do here is then start doing this. So user tried is going to be event dot replacement strings five domain uh, tried it's going to be event dot replacement strings and that's going to be six now we want to grab the computer name so uh, client name from going to be event dot replacement strings and that's going to be 13 and then we're going to have our client ip from which is going to be event dot replacement strings and then we can do that for 19 so that's that so then what i'm just going to do is i'm going to delete this for each statement here so all we're doing is we are grabbing the values exactly that we need and then what i can do is i could then go ahead and uh, we can create a um object here so let's just create an object called uh log and we are going to just create it as an empty array and let's actually just cast this to system dot uh, da, 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 i believe it's dot uh dot collections dot array list so now we have a log, which is an array list, so we can easily add to it. And then we're going to have our log entry here, which is going to be a new object. And then we're going to do a type name of PS object. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do a add member. And then we're going to do input object is going to be our log entry. And then our member type is going to be a note property. And then we're going to do a name, which is going to be the user tried. And then the value, you guessed it, we're going to put user tried here. So we're going to do this for each value that we are taking in. So we're going to do domain tried. And then client name from. And we're going to do client IP from domain tried client name from and then client IP from. So here we are. And then all I like to do is do log dot add log entry. 
And then what I like to do just to remove the output is just do a square bracket void square bracket. So now what we can do here is if we run this whole script, might just take a few minutes here just to go through the actual event log. Now here we are. So here's all the um, wrong logins. So we know that the user tried was admin domain tried client from it's all the same client IP from is all the same. So we could probably know that this was a password spray. Now what I would usually do since we have this going for um, the events in the last hour, what I would probably do this is I would make a scheduled task that would run this every hour on the hour and store this into a database um, or send this by email and give me the results uh, just so I could properly investigate and see what's going on. Um, but when you have this in an event, like what you could do is you could do a group object by um, client name from, and then there we are. So we have um, the count here and we have the name. Uh, so we have a whole bunch. We can group this by the different clients so we can see how many attempts each client has made or if we wanted to just do uh, the client IP from um, how many attempts did the client make or if we wanted to do as well so if I actually do this for more than one hour let's just do four hours here for the failures and then I do user tried for the group object and we just run this entire thing. We're going to see that we can actually see the two users completely separated. So this just, just gives you a lot of flexibility and it really depends on what type of scenario you're looking for. But if you're trying to investigate to see what type of accounts are being hit a lot, um, you might want to just do it this way. So we grabbed all the entries in our security log. We can see that the admin was tried eight times. So Maybe we want to investigate more on the admin. So then what I would do is I would come in and do log and then pipe this to where object uh, user tried and then dash equals or EQ and then admin. And then what I would do is I would come in here and then I would have all the attempts and I could easily say, oh, wow, like this IP is trying to password spray the admin. Let's do something about it. Let's block this IP. Uh, so that's very, very easy. Or in the case of maybe, uh, let's say it was an admin and it was a regular user account and that user is constantly being locked out. All right, um, we see that the all the logins are coming from this laptop at this IP address. Uh, did you maybe, uh, recently change your password and you just forgot to update your password on this device. Uh, let's say they have an iPhone and you see um, that it's coming from their iPhone that they just haven't updated their password on their exchange uh, maybe and they're log constantly logging in and constantly hitting that server locking them out. Uh, so those are all different scenarios that I've encountered anyways in the past. Uh, so hopefully that helps you guys with getting some event um, logs and, and, and events out of the event viewer uh, with the get event log commandlet. In the next video, we'll be looking at the get win event commandlet, uh, which has some slightly different options and is definitely a lot faster than the get event log uh, if you know how to use it properly with the different options that you get. Um, otherwise, it could be very much a similar performance, but I'll be showing you guys how to use the XPath and the filter by XML uh, and maybe I might even get into the hash table filtering, although that one is a little bit more complicated. I prefer the XPath and the XML since those are a little bit easier to kind of figure out uh, what type of query you need to, to put in. So it, like, comment, and subscribe and hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.